Hi, everyone. This is Rob Roy. We just finished our live U.S. market update on the Hub Financial channel. We talked about the Fed's uh, PCE deflator that they uh, released today and also the jobless claims numbers from yesterday, this low volume breakout that we've had out of the triangle. Can that continue? All those things we discussed with some great questions. So you're watching the recording now. Uh, please leave a comment underneath regarding uh, the question that I ask you on uh, what occurs with Tesla. And if you'd like to watch these live, go register at Hub Financial. Go to the Hub Financial channel, register there, and you'll be notified immediately when one of these live broadcasts come out. Thanks. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. And welcome to uh, this week's live U.S. market update. It was a fairly quiet week. There's a couple economic reports that we'll reference here in just a moment, but in general terms, a little bit more of a quiet week. Important thing to look at here is this triangle uh, that we talked about in last week's broadcast. And I left it open for debate on whether one wanted to call this a descending triangle or a symmetrical triangle. In the end, it doesn't really matter. It's just a triangle and uh, we're gonna have a breakout. But I think it's pretty clear to see that uh, this was actually a formation of the symmetrical triangle and we did get breakout with follow through. And so when you see that, and uh, I think you can draw this line right over here and I'm gonna doji right there in the point of the triangle. And then clearly you can see this upward breakout. So when you see that, you want to look at volume. And this is a little bit of a concern, I think, that this breakout has not been supported by volume. That's not unusual to see a vertical move come out as breakout of a triangle or break of a moving average, whatever, on lower volume. But then the volume needs to kick in at some point. So far, that hasn't happened. So it leaves you a little concerned on whether or not this is going to continue to the upside. The economic reports that we did have on Thursday, uh, we had the uh, jobless claims number that came out. Uh, and uh, if you take a look at the jobless claims, uh, Brendan, if you could uh, jump that up for me, uh, we could see that the jobless claims number was slightly higher than expected. And when you're looking at a number being a little bit higher than expected on the jobless claims, you think, all right, that's a positive, right? Because the Fed has said their mandate is they are going to hurt the uh, the jobs market. That's one of their things. The job market is too strong and they want to uh, slow that down. So a little bit of an increase in the jobless claims, I think uh, is pretty warranted. And then they also had uh, fourth quarter GDP uh, final revision because they revised the GDP number like 18 times when it comes out. I guess they just massage it till they get it where they want it to. And so that came down uh, from 2.7 before to 2.6. So a slower fourth quarter. And then now all the rhetoric is, oh, yeah, but we're going to be above three for this quarter. Uh, and it's been back above 3.2. And uh, I, you know, do they know that already? Uh, we're just finishing the quarter, last trading day of the quarter. Nice update on the last trading day of the quarter. That also leaves you a little bit suspect. Is that just, uh, uh, you know, all the investment managers wanting the market to move to the upside so they get their quarterly bonuses in line? So it was a nice move to the upside. I just think that we still have to be just a tiny bit cautious on that move. Uh, from the Federal Reserve standpoint, they released their PCE indicator today, and that's their favorite uh, indicator for inflation, personal consumption, expenditure. So that's the, the PCE deflator uh, is what it's really called. And it's just like, you know, they can't look at the regular CPI and PPI like everybody else does. They have to have their own favorite uh, inflation indicator that they look at. And that showed that things were down a bit. Inflation had cooled a little bit lower than what the expectation was. So are they getting their job done? Is inflation uh, cooling off? Is the market starting to look ahead towards potential um, rate cuts? I know there's a lot of speculation back and forth on that. A lot of people think that's not going to happen. But the bottom line here is we did break out, albeit on lower volume. We've got a positive 1030 cross. That fuchsia colored line is the 30-day moving average. The lime green is the 10. So we crossed there. We're above the 50-day moving average. So a um, little bit overbought. Uh, one of my, uh, my rules uh, is no security in any time frame. Gets very far away from the 10-day moving average. And you can see there's a little bit of separation there. So 
yeah, if we can follow through with this uh, at the beginning of the week, I just wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit. You don't want to see too much of a retracement, but a little pullback perhaps. Um, but and the fact that we've gotten above 400 is important, but the big number is going to be if we can get above 410. If we can move above 410, which we haven't been in quite a while, then that would be pretty impressive uh, in, uh, in my uh, viewpoint. Looking at the 10-year uh, real quick on interest rates, uh, five wave to the downside pattern has been labeled now. That had not been uh, labeled the last time we looked, so we were in corrective mode. So interest rates moving to the downside, I think, is okay. I'm a little nervous about if we break this area here. I would rather see interest rates stay in this trading range, and I think that's okay even for tech stocks. Uh, it's just if we break this, the speed in which it goes to the downside. Uh, if we start to get interest rates tanking, uh, then we can be concerned about where is that money going in? right? Bonds, prices go and, and yields go in opposite direction. So prices going up, yields going down. If interest rates start to drop like that, where's that money coming from? Is it coming out of the equities market? So be concerned a little bit about that if we drop too much, but a, a break of interest rates, a lot of you be saying, well, that's good for the market. It is, as long as it's not a fast move to the downside and indicating money flying into bonds. In my opinion, there's been a lot of money moving into money market uh, because of the banking sector. The, the money market inflows have been off the chart. So is that gonna uh, continue? You could look from another standpoint of we have this low volume break because of all that money that went into money markets. And if all that money starts to come back in, is that when the volume kicks in and supports an upward breakout? It's all really interesting stuff, I think, even though it was a, a fairly quiet week uh, uh, compared to what we've had in the past. There's a dollar still in that five wave to the downside pattern. Not much else to talk about regarding the dollar. You can see that uh, there's the support level. I'm fine with the dollar moving down here. I just don't want to see the dollar break 96. We don't want to get into a point or, you know, getting all the conspiracy theories in there about currencies and stuff. Uh, it's not even worth really mentioning. But as long as the dollar stays fairly strong, and for me, that's above 96, I wouldn't be concerned unless it broke below that. But staying above 96 and coming down, I think that's a positive. So perhaps we're massaging a sweet spot here between rates uh, and the dollar uh, to be quite helpful. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then uh, taking a look at um, the Dow on the DIA, you can see that we have this uh, little bit of a triangle here. And talked about this with our subscribers last night in our insiders meeting, that that was a small triangle. Clearly, that is not the same pattern that we had in the uh, uh, SPY. But check this out. We had this downward zigzag pattern here on the DIA right to the 100% level, spot on it, uh, nailed it. So as Ellie Wave Fibonacci added again, and then an upward zigzag pattern here, uh, right there. And look where we are. We've extended to the 161.8% level. So is that going to be an area of potential resistance? We do have some consolidation right there, congestion, if you will. Getting back above uh, 330 was key today. Looking at the moving averages, once again, just a tiny bit overbought. So perhaps a little bit of softness to start the week. And then we find out, does the volume come in and support this? The most impressive market, as it has been, uh, is the Qs. And just this great five-wave, LA wave pattern to the upside here. Uh, it's like the software is so good on LA Wave. I think it's the best LA Wave software uh, that exists. I've tried all the ones that I know to exist, and it's just been amazing. So there's the Wave 5. It's labeled, and we're almost into this projection here, the time and price projection. So I think that the Q is getting above that previous Wave 3, and having just a little bit of a pullback there. We hit it. We bounced off of it, but we've broken back above it. Once again, looking at the moving averages, a little bit overbought from the 10-day moving average, but making a pretty strong move. Uh, to the upside here. I think the open on Monday is going to be interesting because that's the first trading day of a new month and a new quarter. And that's when a lot of new money goes to work. So I wouldn't be surprised if we open to the upside on Monday, but then can we hold it? That'll be the key, I think, as we go through looking at the Russell, uh, holding that 170 level. If you want a signal of uh, the small caps, they have not been participating. Notice that chart does not look like the other ones with the movement to the upside. But the positive is we are bouncing off of 170 and not really uh, not much matters on the uh, um, uh, IWM until we move back up and start to get above or get at least close somewhere in the area 
of 190. So if we take a look at the VIX to finish up our uh, market analysis, this is a little bit of concern, right, from uh, a sentiment standpoint. So we see that we have the VIX all the way back down here, right at the bottom. If we are going to continue higher, uh, like it looks like we're trying to break out of that triangle on the SPY, where is the room from a volatility standpoint? You all know that usually the VIX goes up when the market goes down and vice versa. Um, there is a little bit of theory. The VIX is supposed to be an indicator of volatility. It's just the markets are normally more volatile to the downside than the upside, but it isn't supposed to be an indicator of fear and greed, it's supposed to be an indicator of volatility. My point here is it's very rare, but there have been points historically when the market has gone up and the VIX has gone up, and that's when you have a really strong move to the upside. Is there a catalyst to create a big move to the upside and tons of volume come in and the VIX doesn't tank down and go below 18? I think there's a small percentage chance of that, uh, but it nonetheless exists out there. So I thought we would look at a um, sentiment indicator. Uh, and um, if you would bring up that chart, uh, Brendan, for me on uh, the, the investors survey uh, that was published here on CNBC. Uh, and if we scroll down and take a look, the first survey that was done, I think this is really interesting when we're talking about sentiment, the uh, S&P, the 68% say that there is more room for the market to fall, 68%. So now we're starting to look at opposites, right? Being a contrarian. We've already shown the VIX. Looks like, you know, we're down at the low area and we're likely going to have a move to the upside in the VIX, indicating a move down. But can we do that when there's that many uh, investors that are saying that, hey, we expect the market to go down 68%, 16% uh, saying that it could go uh, to the upside. Uh, the biggest risk in 2023 was a misstep by the Fed uh, in inflation. So those are things they're talking about. And this one I think is really interesting. The safest haven right now. Guess what the safest haven is? Cash. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Cash is the number one as far as the safest place. So there's their example of all that money that's been moving into money markets. As I talked about, that's a, a perfect example of it. So when you take a look at uh, indicators along those lines, um, the sentiment seems to be extremely bearish. And then we have a low VIX, a bit of a dichotomy, I think. Which one is going to win out? Win out? Um, you know, we talked all about this uh, in our Trade Finder meeting on Tuesday night. And by the way, if you haven't attended Trade Finder before, we do it every Tuesday night. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's free. You can register uh, here in the link or go to our website at ewotrader.com and register there. We talk about the markets. Uh, we look for trade ideas and we have a live Q&A at the end. It's a lot of fun. We get great questions. We got a really good group that follows us. Love to have you sign up and join along with us. So um, uh, trade finder, a lot of fun, but we did go through this uh, exact scenario uh, in Tuesday night talking about can the market continue to break to the upside with the VIX to the downside? Going to be interesting next week, I think. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin is, uh, and that's, you know, one that we get questions on all the time regarding Ellie Wave. Uh, does LA wave work on Bitcoin. Well, look at that chart and you tell me, uh, you know, the wave four coming down to the 61.8% level, that means that you're supposed to have a wave five at 100%. It couldn't be any more classic LA wave Fibonacci levels. And where this tap box is, as forecast by uh, the LA wave algorithm within private source, look where we've been just bounding back and forth here. That's just right through that box. Uh, since uh, uh, we made this big run. Now, I am a little nervous about this vertical move. Another one of my rules is vertically move, vertical moves normally get retraced. So you go vertically up, often you come back down, you go vertically down, you come back up. But you have to be impressed with this consolidation. If you're long Bitcoin and long the cryptos, this is exactly what you want to see. You don't want to see a big gift back. But I would just point uh, one other note here is we had this vertical move and we consolidated for a while. And then we still retraced a lot of it. So I think you have to keep that in your back pocket. Don't get too excited about the cryptos and Bitcoin yet. But boy, this pattern, this five-wave pattern that completed here was just spot on from LA Wave. And this, if you wonder, okay, well, what does it mean? Where do we go from here? When you have a completed LA Wave pattern like this, you do move into a wait and see mode. Let the algorithm 
analyze what's occurring from here and give us our best analysis of where we could go from here. So I think we're in a pause area here, but pretty impressive that we've consolidated the move so well thus far. How's that for an ugly chart, Ducks? I mean, does it get any uglier than that? Uh, and uh, you're correct. They had to do a secondary offering. And in order to get their secondary offering filled, they had to go 20% down below their price, hence the gap to the downside here. So they've diluted uh, the float uh, by you know the secondary offering and the fact that they had to go below $1.50, they had to go down to $1.20 or something in order to get that uh, secondary offering filled. Now, what they say they're going to do and uh, is move into, they're going to use that money, the additional money, to move into hydrogen fuel cells. You know, they got their electric trucks is what Nikola is famous for. So they're going to go in and start uh, creating hydrogen fuel cells. I think that's interesting. Perhaps they're trying to do something different, distinguish themselves from, you know, Tesla's trucks, uh, electric trucks, whatever. It's going to be really interesting to see um, how this whole area now of the renewable energy stuff uh, starts to play out. Uh, here's a chart of NEO. We actually sent out uh, an alert to our uh, alert subscribers at EWOTrader.com, EWOTrader.com um, on NEO to go long. And here are the particulars. Uh, we're breaking above 10, which is really important from an investment manager standpoint. If you get above $10 a share, growth, growth and in income, uh, the investment objective of growth or uh, better can uh, can own those. So that could kick some volume in there. We have a positive 1030 cross here. A lot of market makers look at that. If you're wondering why are you showing that? Because a lot of floor traders, market makers look at that. We are above the 50-day moving average. And the DMI is supportive. The positive directional indicator, well above the negative, good separation. The ADX is above 20 and moving to the upside. So, um, you know, China's reopening. They also have an earnings report in the not too distant future. And there's, I was reading some uh, um, analyst reports on this. I don't get big into fundamentals. I'm more of a technical trader. We look at the charts, et cetera. It's never a bad thing to have fundamentals behind you. And there's a lot of speculation out there that uh, they really lowballed the number and the fact that uh, their forecast was, was very low, that it could be easily beaten, and that could be a catalyst to move NEO up as well. So I'm glad you asked about that one. Uh, that one was news for us today. Um, you know, so we got Nicolo, we got uh, NEO, and my favorite. Where are we going, Ducks? We're going to look at Tesla, aren't we? Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're talking about the look what happened today. So um, obviously, there is some. Um, um, optimism uh, about that number coming out Sunday that you just referenced. But from a technical standpoint, the key here is it broke above 200. It needed to do that, and it did. Uh, and, you know, you just got to keep shaking your head. Uh, the valuation on Tesla is so high. People love this stock. You say anything negative about it, then you get all kinds of <laughs> um, hate mail coming at your way. It's like the most loved stock I've seen in a really long time. Uh, but my commentary had been, uh, we talked about this in Trade Finder Tuesday night too, where I said it had to get above 200. Well, it did today. Now we have to see, do we get that follow through on Monday and everything could change Sunday night, right, Ducks? I mean, depending on how that number is, you could see a big blast to the upside here, or you could see a retracement back down. Remember, you have to have a second day of follow through or confirmation day. It is impressive that we broke above 200 today, but one day doesn't mean anything. We need that follow through on Monday. And if we get it, that likely means that the, uh, the number was good. And who knows where Tesla could go from there. We are in a technically in a five wave to the downside pattern. You got to keep that uh, in the back of your mind. Uh, but if we break above 220, we could disqualify this five wave to the downside pattern. Or is this indicating maybe that number isn't going to be so good to say, you know, <laughs> this is going to be a stock to watch <laughs> the beginning of the week for sure. The chart's pretty impressive. So we you could draw this line here. Uh, right at 155, a lot of people say, you know, that's the line in the sand as far as support resistance. You can see how it bounced off it back in October. We came back up again in February, tried it twice in February, moved back down. But we're in a well-constructed five wave uh, to the upside pattern, LA wave pattern, 46% uh, right at a 50% corrective move. So that wave five could go as high as 100%. And uh, I would say that's, you know, probably getting around 170, maybe coming back towards these highs and they have so much cash. You know, I've talked about this before is one of the stocks that uh, 
that I would always be hesitant to short no matter what's going on in the market is Apple because they have so much money. And then there's speculation, are they going to buy somebody uh, or whatever? So yeah, the, the negative GM news just didn't uh, feg them at all, did it? I mean, it's just like, oh, so what? <laughs> we'll go, go buy our own Apple products, right? We don't need their help. Uh, and so powering to the upside here, slightly above the 10-day moving average, but not a lot. But I was impressed with this move above 160. So somewhere in this range between 150 and 160 is where all the consolidation lies. I made a pretty good case for 155, I think. But breaking above 160, looks like Apple wants to head to those August highs. So, um, yeah, pretty impressive chart considering. The triangle that we talked about, look at that, we broke out, ducks. So we, we broke to the upside here. And it looks like perhaps from here that we uh, continue uh, moving higher. Uh, that's a decent follow through day. When you look at that, you're going to want to see volume as well. And here we have the same problem of low volume. So there wasn't much volume today. It seemed like uh, it, this is more, we talked about this, there, there wasn't necessarily a ton of buying that was going on. There was a seller strike. It's like the sellers just backed away. We'll let all the you know money managers have their uh, end of quarter rally here so they can get their bonuses. It's like the sellers just walked away today. Did they come back? Are they gone? Um, but I do think some of that money from money markets is going to have to come back in the market. We're going to have to get some volume at some point real soon, or I think these breakouts could be suspects. So we have the exact same thing going on here with Amazon. A nice looking breakout of the triangle, but can it hold? It also with the market is going to need some volume in my opinion, but it did break out. I, I really like the fact that we see here's one of those vertical things and that made me nervous on Google because there another example vertically up right over here that occurred in January so vertically up what happens right back down so those things make you nervous and then over here um, just to show you that it works in both directions vertical move down recovered right back to the upside so yeah I can show you example after example of what makes me nervous about vertical moves but this came back down. It did come back down some, and you had to look at that and say, oh, wow, is Google coming all the way back? Are we going back to 90? But it held there at 100, and that was pretty impressive. Uh, obviously, we all know that uh, 100 is one of those big round numbers, and I used to use the analogy of Star Trek. My dad's a huge Star Trek fan. This tractor beam effect, you know, just seems to suck the stock to those big round numbers like 100. Uh, but coming back down and holding it, Doji yesterday, break back to the upside today, that's pretty impressive as well. So, you know, there's there's a lot, there, there's still nervousness. Uh, there's a lot of positives going on in the market uh, with these stocks. Um, and perhaps the, that negative sentiment out there is enough to keep this market moving higher. Yeah, and it, it just doesn't say any time I do any sort of a, um, whether it's insiders or uh, the trade finder meeting or our live updates here, NVIDIA is just, it's getting close, I think, ducks to Tesla as far as being so loved. Everybody always wants to talk about NVIDIA and look at that chart. I mean, you can see why. How impressive is that move? So, uh, you know, and you look at the, the DMI and it's just, hanging there in the upper end of the range. It'll do that when the stock continues to run. That break above 240, I thought was key. We actually had two good bullish alerts for our alert subscribers at Evo Trader on this. And it appears that we got out a little bit too soon because we're out of both of them, both of them nice gains. But I thought when we were coming back here to this 260 level, there was a chance and this is what I was looking for, and I may got a little too greedy here, but there was a chance we'd come back down and test that 240 level because it was resistance. It didn't do it. It held 260 and took off. So perhaps exited those a little bit early. You know, you're never upset with gains, right? But um, man, uh, just continues to impress. And as far as how far it can go, um, you know, this this was, this could really run. It's already got this huge zigzag pattern that it's it's already an extended pattern because you can see right up to the 161.8% level. Is that going to be it? There are stocks that'll go to 261.8. That's the next FIB level. If people are wondering, can it do that? It's trying, but that's a that's an extended level. And, you know, I, you, I thought it looked tired here uh, last week, but uh, it, it it continues to power ahead and just awfully impressive on that move. But again, I'd be a little cautious here because of where we're sitting with that 
C wave extension at the 161.8% extension. But since so many people ask about this, Ducks, I think it's, I want to know what the viewers think. Uh, where do you guys think NVIDIA is going to go? You ask about it all the time. So you're following it. Is this it? Does NVIDIA need to pause? Or is NVIDIA going to turn and continue to run more to the upside? I'd be really curious as to uh, uh, what our viewers think. Leave a comment uh, underneath. If you're watching the recording, leave a comment underneath the uh, uh, the recording on uh, where you think NVIDIA is going. A pause now or just power higher? It's actually Will's putting a comment in there now. It says it's hard to watch this bull run and make nothing, but you have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we made a little bit, but it certainly uh, certainly exited a little too soon based on that chart. But nobody catches the bottoms or the tops exactly, right? So you take yeah. your chunk out of the middle and you'd be happy. Well, looking at this market, this markets have had a good run this week. And we looked at SLV last week, the silver ETF. Are we still looking at it as fondly as we were last week? Uh, for us, no, actually closed out a bullish alert on SLV for our alert subscribers today. Uh, since you uh, mentioned it, and I think people can see why. You know, that's, again, one heck of a run that we've had there. There's the separation between where SLV is and the 10-day moving average. So we're a little bit overbought short-term there, and we have a lot of resistance right here at 22. All that consolidation that occurred back in December and January, I just can't see silver, or the SLV at least, powering through this 22 level. Perhaps it does. But normally when you try to break some kind of resistance like that, that's that strong and you do it when you're already overbought, it doesn't hold. I really think SLV needs to consolidate here a little bit. I mean, that was the actions that we took today as well. So um, I, I feel like maybe we churn a bit here, even a little bit of a give back wouldn't be so bad. You can see that this was a, a pretty good range of uh, resistance, but I think, I think maybe we get a little bit of a pause here out of the SLV. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely gonna go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.